Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-Minus 365. In today's episode, I'm recovering all the updates for Microsoft in October of 2022. If you follow along with my updates in the past, you know I focus in on what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. As always, if this content's helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Getting into it here, I have a few more announcements this month just due to the nature of Microsoft Ignite being this month as well. We'll start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do though. This first announcement is related to a new offering called Teams Premium. It's going to expand the licensing model with Microsoft Teams and it includes a wide range of features, one of which I'm showing here called Virtual Appointments. And so there's a list of features that are moving from the standard offering into the premium offering. In my opinion, those features are not something that's widely adopted, not of a high concern, but you can check those out on my blog post, which I'll supplement below, which includes all the features that will be coming into Teams Premium, along with the features that are moving from the standard into premium licensing model. So this will happen in the February timeframe of next year as far as the general availability of Teams Premium, and it will be charged at $10 per user per month initially here. Next one here is payments in Microsoft Teams. This is allowing you to use an app to connect to a third-party service like PayPal or Stripe and be able to request payments during a Teams meeting. It'll be an interesting dynamic and I'll be interested to see how this app looks when it comes out, but it will be introduced in November 2022 as a public preview. Next one here, browser screen pop for incoming PSDN calls. This ties into Teams voice capabilities and allows you to configure a web pop-out via the Teams Admin Center here where you can pass in certain dynamic information about the call and route to a specific part of a website like within Salesforce for instance. It's again another one that you might want to check out if you guys are using a third-party CRM tool and leveraging Teams Voice as well too today. Timelines for this one is early November, be complete by late November. Microsoft Places was announced at Microsoft Ignite, and this was one I'm more excited about, but there's a lot to unpack, so I'm not going to go into the full amount of detail just for the sake of time in this video. But basically, it's an app that allows users to schedule some space at a office or designate whether they're going to be in an office or remote on certain days during the week or month. And this will just help with more effective planning when you think about the collaboration that goes on in an office along with utilizing office space if you're running a hybrid environment within your workforce. So this will become important not only just for the productivity measures, but also for budgeting potentially, if you're thinking about maybe leasing more space and what that actually looks like from a resource allocation standpoint. So this will be in 2023, we'll have more exact timelines probably over the next few months here. These next two are related to Teams meeting experiences. The first one is a new piece of hardware from Yalink, which you can see down in the screenshot below, which basically is a camera that can pan around to different individuals as they're talking to present their face and overall you know, presentation to the other users on the Teams meeting call. So it's pretty interesting, pretty cool little piece of tech that's coming out from Yadlink, and that'll be in the early 2023 timeframe. The other announcement was a partnership with Cisco for Teams room devices. So if you're a Cisco partner today and procuring devices from them as part of a partner program, you may be able to procure even more here that you can deliver down to downstream customer environments. This again is early 2023 as well. Shifting into Microsoft Outlook here, this only one I wanted to include just because I feel like it's noteworthy is cloud signature roaming basically that you can get within Outlook. And this will allow you to migrate local signatures to the cloud automatically with no additional manual steps. So this means if a person has configured a signature in a local Outlook environment, they get a new device, they can actually have that signature as well too that they can then deploy without having to manually recreate that. So this will happen late October, so you might already be seeing this by the time of this recording. Next here, shifting into Microsoft Intune, the first announcement is the name in and of itself. Microsoft announced at Microsoft Ignite that they will be shifting from Endpoint Manager back to Microsoft Intune as the naming convention. And with that comes some additional licensing as well too, which I'll talk about in the next slide. But this first announcement is related to the connection for Chrome OS devices as a public preview within Intune. This is allowing you to connect your Google environment to Microsoft Endpoint Manager so that you can manage Chrome OS devices within that environment. 
And basically, this is a benefit, especially if you're working with the education frame where those devices are more prevalent. But regardless, you'll be able to manage those now within Microsoft Intune. Public previews available today if you wanted to check that out. Next here, this is a feature that has been introduced at Microsoft Unite, but it's a feature that's part of a wider based offering set that is coming to Microsoft Intune as some more premium based licensing. More information to come on that. I detail that in my blog as well too, if you wanna get more information. But one of the features that caught my eye as, as being more valuable than the others was this endpoint privilege management solution. This is basically allowing you to automate and manage when workers have permission to the, use the admin privileges on a Windows device. This is really important when we think about a controversy between giving a user local admin rights and them being able to install applications that they need and things like that. So this is giving you the ability to have more flexibility in that regard. It's something that we're personally excited about as well too. The public preview will be in early 2023. Again, this is a feature that's coupled with a variety that they detail out and I'll link that below, but there's some other ones there that look pretty cool as well too, which includes the introduction of a wider app catalog that you can use to deploy applications within Intune and additionally patch management capabilities to go along with those applications as well which previously all of that is really a manual experience from the app packaging to the app patches as well too that you might do within your customer environments today. Lastly here, admin section, just a couple last points. The GDAP timeline updates, many of you have been keeping up this because you have to move all of your customers, kind of a mandatory action that you have to take, but they have pushed the timelines again as far as certain deadlines that we have. The first one, talking in January of 2023, you're gonna stop creating the DAP relationships when new customers are being established, and they'll be removing the inactive DAP relationships that haven't been used in 90 days, meaning your text or anybody else hasn't gone into those accounts in over 90 days. March is kind of the hard deadline we have now for leveraging both the bulk migration tool to move our DAP connections into GDAP without having to do one at a time, and then additionally, it's when Microsoft will automatically transition you to GDAP and choose the Azure AD roles for you, which obviously you probably want to avoid if you wanna maintain the levels of access that you have today. Final announcement, I covered a lot of Ignite updates in today's video, some of the ones that I felt were most important, most applicable to the space, but obviously there was a ton that came out with Ignite. So I'll link below an article in my blog as well which goes through each individual update and give you some links to additional information. There's certain things in there for Azure or Power Platform that might be specific to your company that you wanna learn more about, but don't apply to a wider audience, which is why I didn't cover them today. That's everything I had for you today though. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as I mentioned earlier, like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.